Yes, sir. Of course, we'll be looking for a break around noon, but again, we're looking for logical stopping spots. So if you're close to done, we can certainly finish with the witness. Is this going to be your investigator or somebody else? This is going to be a crime scene technician, Your Honor. Okay, very good. Please bring our jury. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready to resume with the trial of the case. Mr. Porter, call your next witness, sir. Your Honor, the state would call Ashley Finney to the stand. CSI Ashley Finney. Just one second. Okay. Could you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this matter now pending shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. You can put your hand down if you would pull up to the microphones a little bit mm -hmm. and speak up so the jury can hear you. Okay. All right. Could you state your name, please? My name is Ashley Finney. And could you spell your last name for the record? Last name Finney, F-I-N-N-E-Y. And what is your current employment? I am a crime scene investigation supervisor at Gwinnett County Police Department. All right. Could you tell the jury a little bit about um, the training that is required to become a crime scene investigator? The training that we have, I have a Bachelor of Science degree in forensic biology. When I was hired with Gwinnett, we have an on-the-job field training program where you're paired with a senior crime scene specialist and you learn how to respond to crime scenes and what your role is. There's also several classes that we are required to take by the state of Georgia to become certified as a crime scene technician for the state. And then I personally am also certified by the International Association for Identification as a, a crime scene analyst. And you I assume you've also completed the state-mandated course. Yes, I have. How long have you worked for the Gwinnett County Police Department? 
I have worked for Gwinnett County for about eight and a half years. Prior to that, did you have any experience working as a, as a crime scene investigator? No, I did not. Did you do any internships while you were in college? Um, in college, I just took the classes required, no internships. Right. Um, and as a supervisor, what are your responsibilities at a crime scene once you've been called out and have responded? As a supervisor for crime scenes, my job is to um, kind of oversee the operations at the crime scene. Just um, I'm a liaison between the crime scene specialist who's lead on the case and the detectives and officers that we work with on a daily basis. Uh, my job is to make sure that we leave no stone left unturned. We need to make sure that the processing that we do is thorough, the documentation that we do is thorough, and um, make sure we get it all done while we're out there. Uh, if you could, could you explain to the jury, you mentioned the liaison between the investigators and the crime scene investigators. Um, tell the jury a little bit about how that works and what is the value of it. When we are out at a crime scene, we almost always are not there by ourselves. We are with officers and detectives um, in varying roles, whether they're homicide detectives, robbery detectives, burglar detectives. So they have information that they will pass on to us as crime scene specialists, and then we will find things out from what the scene is telling us that we will pass on to those detectives. So we work in tandem. It's a relationship that has to be, um, you have to communicate very well and keep each other updated on your findings as well as the detectives keeping us on their findings. And do the, do the detectives findings affect the way that you process a scene or, or look for particular items of evidence? Yes, sometimes. Um, not all the time. Um, sometimes uh, we know the things that we need to do and we're going to do them, but if the detective were to find something out um, from an interview or just from, you know, talking to whoever and they pass it on to us, it could affect um, the way that we process as far as maybe we would choose not to do something because there would not be an evidentiary need to do that thing. or. They might tell us something that we say, okay, now we need to do this extra thing that is normally not typical, but in this instance, we would receive information and do more. So for would an example be that if an officer told you that a person shot in a certain direction, that might allow you to look for the projectile or the shell casing in, in another place rather than maybe where you first responded? Correct, yes. I'd like to call your attention to Saturday, November the 2nd, in the early morning hours okay. of 2013. Um, were, were you, as the acting supervisor and other crime scene technicians, called out to a scene at 1131 Veranda Chase Drive in Lawrenceville? Yes, I was the um, lead crime scene specialist on this case, and then with me, an acting CSI supervisor responded as well as a uh, backup specialist to assist me. Okay, so this was prior to you being a supervisor. Correct, correct. Um, tell, tell the jury about the call-out process and what it takes to, to get up out of bed and get to the scene and, and what you feel like you need to take with you and the equipment that's available to you. On the weekends for a Gwinnett crime scene, we are on call, meaning that if there is a crime scene call out that we are requested to respond to, we are responding from our house. So we are dispatched by our radio personnel. They inform us of the type of scene that we're responding to. And then what happens after that is after I get ready at my house and I have my uniform and all that, I go to Gwinnett Police Headquarters, that's where we keep our vehicles, and we load equipment into the truck to take with us to the scene. We keep the equipment inside, a lot of it is temperature sensitive, so that's why we keep it at headquarters in our secure facility. So I, res I respond to headquarters, load up my gear, load up all the equipment that I may or may not need, and then from there, respond to the scene. Is that various equipment based on what you've been told when you received the notification? We, or is there a standard loadout? We load everything all the time. You never know what you're going to get. We load everything all the time. Um, so assuming you did all that, do, about what time do you think you arrived at the scene? Do you recall? 
call? Um, I believe it was around 7 o'clock in the morning, 7 a.m. So tell the jury what's the first thing you do as you arrive at the scene. When we arrive on scene, uh, we typically find an officer, either a first responder, someone who was there when the uh, uh, call out was first made, or we find a detective and we meet with them, um, touch base with them, and we receive an initial type of briefing information from whoever the officer is that we meet with. And in processing a crime scene, what is the, what is the first step? The first thing that we do after that initial briefing is we do a preliminary walkthrough of the scene where we walk around and make our observations. Um, we aren't touching anything. We're just simply looking at things, making any kind of necessary notes to remind ourselves, okay, this is something that I'm observing. I need to pay attention to this. Come back and document this later. And in the walkthrough, that's kind of what we're looking for, any possible evidence, anything that looks out of place. Right. And did you do that at this particular scene? Yes, I did. Would you characterize this as a, as a large scene, or was it, what, was it typically a small scene, or were there multiple scenes? Um, this was uh, multiple scenes. We, um, I divided it in, as a primary scene and a secondary scene. Um, so the first walkthrough that I did was of what I call the primary scene, and it was um, in a large area, but the actual scene itself was relatively small. I'm going to show you some pictures that have been previously marked, identified, and admitted and shown to the jury. And I would like you to take a look at those if I could. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? You may. Your Honor, if I may, I'm, I'm going to be moving back and forth. Um, you can freely approach back. the witness if you like, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> I'm going to show you, First of all, what's been marked as State's Exhibit Number 26, do you recognize that? Yes, I do. And can you describe for the jury what is what is pictured in that photograph? Um, in this photograph, this is um, inside an apartment complex. This viewpoint is standing in um, what I call it a grassy median, and it's looking towards apartment buildings. And in the grassy median, you can see two black trash bags as well as a metal uh, trash can with its lid uh, slightly askew. And I'd like to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit Number 27. And can you identify that, please, and describe it to the jury? This is an opposing angle from the first photograph that I described. Now I'm looking away from those apartment buildings. I'm getting closer to the black trash bags as well as the metal trash can. Right. And tell the jury why you take these multiple perspectives of a, of a crime scene. For documentation, our main job as crime scene investigators is documentation. So when we're documenting a crime scene by way of photographs, we want to make sure we do all, we call them overall photos. So I'm going to take overall photos showing the scene from every single angle, from um, every single viewpoint, just to make sure that I'm capturing those surroundings that may or may not be important later. After I get done taking my overall photos, we take what's called medium photos. Those are going to show, okay, now I'm focusing on something. I'm focusing on a potential type of evidence or possible evidence that's going to be important for this case. Our medium photographs are going to show what we're zeroing in on. And then after the mediums, we take close-up photographs that are just that specific item of evidence. We're showing, okay, this is important. We're focusing on this thing. Draw your attention to this thing. So with that description, I'd like to show you State's Exhibit number 28 and 29. Is that, first of all, can you describe what's in those photographs and, and then answer the question, is that a, an example of what you just described to the jury? 28 and 29 are both close-up photographs of the two uh, black trash bags that were in that grassy area. Um, 28 is... I'm zeroing in on this. They are filling the frame. The black trash bags are what I'm focusing on. The next 129, I'm even closer. I'm showing, okay, one of them is slightly opened. Let's see what the contents are. And eventually, did you remove an in inventory and photograph the contents of those trash bags? Yes, I did. Um, I want to use, I'm not going to go through every single photograph. I want to I wanna just give one more example of states exhibits number 36, 
37 and 38. If you could look at those, describe what they contain and then um, sort of describe the perspective of them. Okay, 36, 37, and 38 are all overall photographs. They are taken from a viewpoint of um, my secondary scene, my secondary scene being the apartment in which the victim lived. Um, these photos in particular are taken from the balcony of that apartment and they are looking out towards where those initial photographs of my primary scene were. They show the location of the trash can and black garbage bags um, in relation to the apartment that I was standing in. Um, you've described the secondary crime. You described a secondary crime scene. Can you tell the jury what that crime scene was and the process you went through um, in terms of documenting that crime scene? Yes, the secondary crime scene was the apartment that the victim had lived in. It was a third floor top level apartment in its building. Um, it was a three bedroom, a two bathroom apartment and it also had a small office area as well in it. Um, so after the uh, primary crime scene was documented, I moved on to that secondary crime scene. The first thing I did was start back at the beginning. I get my briefing information from the officers and then I do a preliminary walkthrough. I walk through the apartment where I'm looking for something that may be out of place, something that may be potential evidence. I then go to get my camera and I start taking pictures. I have to document the crime scene as I find it. Right. And in the course of that, there was a, was a crime, what we call crime scene video also prepared as part of that overall documentation? Yes, a video was taken. And was that done by someone else other than you or did you do it? Yes, it was done by our CSI acting supervisor that day. All right. Now, I want to talk about, I want to look at some of the photographs regarding the secondary crime scene, okay. the interior of the apartment. Um, if you could, if, if, I'm trying to group these for you. If you could take a look at State's Exhibit Number 41. <laughs> Tell me what that is. And what, uh, first of all, is that a photograph that you took at the crime scene? Yes, it is. And do you, do you recognize that photograph as one that you took? Yes, I do. Is it an accurate representation of what you were taking the picture of? Yes, it is. Can you tell the jury what it contains? This is a photograph of the inside of the pantry in the kitchen. In the photograph, you can see the top two shelves, um, and there's food items on both shelves. For, uh, for states, well, these are PS, marked PS, as photograph of the state, but it's PS number 42. Can you take a look at that? And first of all, is that a photograph that you recognize? Yes. Did you take that photograph? I did. Is it an accurate representation of what is contained with Yes. And can you describe to the jury what that photograph is in? This is also a picture of the inside of the pantry. I'm just moving down the shelves. So the first picture showed the top two shelves, and now I'm taking my camera and I'm moving down and documenting the remainder of the shelves. Let me show you what has been marked as PS number 43. Is that, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Um, did you take that? Yes. Is it an accurate depiction of what you were taking the picture of? Yes. Um, can you describe to the jury what that photograph is? These are the um, opened cabinets in the kitchen. They are filled, this particular photograph has three shelves visible on them and there's multiple food items inside um, sitting on all the shelves in this photograph. I'm going to show you PS number 44. First of all, do you recognize that photograph? Yes. And did you take that photograph? I did. Is it, does it accurately depict what you were photographing? Yes. Can you describe to the jury what that photograph contains? 
This is a photograph of the inside of the refrigerator. You can see some of the door. Um, mostly it's just the interior main part of a refrigerator and you can see both food and drink items inside. I'm going to show you what's been marked as PS number 45. Mm -hmm. um, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Did you take that photograph? I did. And does it accurately depict what you were photographed? Yes. Um, and can you describe the contents of that photograph? Yes, this is also the interior kind of main portion of a refrigerator. It's the bottom shelf, and within the photo, there are um, glass containers, like leftover containers that you can imagine with lids on them with food inside, and then beside it is a uh, pot that you would use to cook food on top of a stove. And then finally, States Exhibit number 46. Uh, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that? I did. Is it an accurate depiction of what you were photographed? Yes. And um, can you describe what that depicts or what that shows? This is the refrigerator door contents, and the shelves that are visible in this photo all are filled with uh, different type of condiments and food items. Your Honor, given the number of photographs I anticipate going through, I'm going to do I'm try and do them in sections, show them to the defendant, and move for their admission. It is, yes, sir. Your Honor, may I have just a second? You may. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move to admit what has been marked and identified as PS number 41, a photograph depicting the top shelves of the pantry in the apartment, uh, PS number 42, which is the second and third shelves of the same pantry, PS number 43, which depicts a cabinet containing food items, a uh, PS number 44, which depicts an open refrigerator with leftover and fresh food items, PS number 45, which, which is a depiction of the interior of a refrigerator containing cooking uh, containers that appear to contain leftover food, and PS number 46, which is, was described as the photograph of the interior door of the same, uh, same refrigerator. Any objection? No objection. PS 41 through 46 is each admitted without objection. I want to stay within the, in the crime scene, the secondary crime scene, for a few minutes, and then we can move on from there. Uh, I'd like you to look at State's Exhibit number 52, if you do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Um, did you take that photograph? Yes. And what does, is it an accurate representation of what you were photographed? Yes. Right, and what does it depict? These are the cabinets that are underneath the kitchen sink, and they're opened, and the photograph is showing the, um, the overall view of what the contents are in those cabinets. And State's Exhibit number 53, do you recognize that photograph? Yes. Is that photograph, did you take that photograph? Yes. Is it an accurate representation of what, it, of what you were photographing? Yes. Um, and can you describe the contents of, of what that depicts? This is another picture of the cabinets that are below the kitchen sink and the contents. In this photograph, um, I'm starting to remove the layers of what's in the sink in order to better photograph and see what all is in there. So in this photograph, you can see some of the plastic uh, grocery bags have been removed, and um, then it's an overview of what is still under the sink. Now, it's, 
after they're removed, do you also go through the grocery bags or determine yes. if they have anything in them? Yes, I do. And did you do that in this case? Yes, I did. And did you subsequently find in various bags throughout the house items of evidentiary value? Yes, I did. I'd like to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit Number 54. Um, is, do you recognize that photograph? Yes. Is that, did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. It, does it depict accurately what, what you were taking a picture of? Yes. And what does that show? This is a close-up photograph of a specific item um, under the kitchen sink in those cabinets. The photograph shows it's an empty box, and inside the box there is a roll of duct tape that is visible, as well as a grocery bag. And then finally, State's Exhibit Number PS55, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And does that did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Does it accurately depict what you were taking a picture of. Yes. And can you describe what that shows? This is, I have now taken that box out of the cabinet in order to better see what's inside of it. So the box is now sitting on the kitchen floor, and this is a overview, kind of a, the camera is pointing down into the top of the box, and you can see a roll of duct tape and a plastic grocery bag inside. Yara, at this time, the state would move to admit uh, what has been designated as PS52, uh, which is a photograph underneath a kitchen, a kitchen sink cabinet is depicted in the photograph. We would move to admit PS number 53, which was described by the witness as that same cabinet with certain items removed. We would move to admit PS54, which is a closer depiction of a cardboard box containing a roll of duct tape and a plastic bag. And then finally, PS number 55, which is a even closer view of the same box with the same trash can and the same uh, same uh, roll of duct tape. Any objection? No objection. PS 52 through 55 are each admitted without objection. Um, you also took overall photographs of the of the apartment. Is that right? Yes, I did. All right, and I like. Excuse me. And and. Those are taken both with a still camera and with a video, is that right? Yes, both. All right. I'm going to, we're going to do some, some shots of the interior of the apartment. Um, first of all, can you look at what's been marked as PS number 47? Yes. Do you recognize that photograph? I do. Did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Does it accurately depict what you, what, at the apartment as it was? Yes, it does. And what does that angle of your photograph show? This is showing when you first walked into the apartment through the front door, through the front entry door, you entered into a living room. Um, this photograph is taken, you had just walked through the doorway and I stopped and I took this photo. So it shows part of the living room as well as the attached uh, dining area and then a little bit of the kitchen. I want to show you what's been marked as PS number 48 and do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And um, did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. did it, does it accurately depict what you were photographing at the time? Yes. Um, can you describe the contents of that photograph? Yes, there was a hallway off of the living room that led to bedrooms and a bathroom and closet. This is the first bedroom that I came to on the left, and it um, appeared to be a small child's bedroom. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 49. Can you look, do you recognize that photograph? Yes. Um, does it accurately depict what you were photographing at the time? 
Yes, it does. Okay. Yes, I did. Can you describe to the jury what that photograph contains? This is an overall photo of a baby's crib um, with the mattress and blanket inside. All right. Was that in a separate bedroom than the previously identified child's bed, or was it in the same? Do you recall? I, it was in the same bedroom as the child's. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 50. Mm -hmm. um, did you take, the, do you recognize that photo? Yes. Did you take that photo? Yes. And is that photo an accurate representation of the scene as you saw? Yes, it is. And what does that describe? This is that same first bedroom, the children's bedroom, and this is a photograph with the closet doors open, so you can see inside of the closet there are a few clothes hanging on hangers inside the closet and some shelves. And then finally, what's been marked as PS51, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? Yes. Does it accurately depict the scene? Yes. And what does that photograph contain? This is the master bedroom. This bedroom was the last one that you came to when you were walking down the hallway. The photograph has the uh, bed visible in it, and there was a baby's pack and play right beside it, as well as a small couch. At this time, the state would move to admit. Is it easier for the court reporter and for the court for me to just list the numbers and move to admit them, or should I describe each item as I as I tender it? As you prefer, sir. Either way is acceptable. <coughs> Your Honor, in that case, um, the courtroom is getting warm, and this is not the most exciting part of a trial. I'll move to admit PS number 48, 49, 50. 51, and I, I also have PS number 47. Any objection? So it would be 47 through 51. Okay. There's no objection. States PS 47 through 51 are each admitted without objection. Um, you also focused, as you were taking pictures of other bedrooms, you, meant, you focused on one particular bedroom. Yes. Um, <coughs> what was the reason for that focus? The focus in this bedroom was that I was advised that this was the victim, Amani's bedroom. And so did you take a number of pictures of that area from different angles? Yes, I did. And did you, um, again, move from far to close in taking those photographs? Yes, I did. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 56. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? Yes. Is that photograph an accurate representation of the scene as it was? Yes. Can you describe to the jury what was contained in that photograph? This was a photograph taken from inside of the victim's bedroom. Visible in the photograph is a bed. There are no sheets on the bed. There's just a comforter that's laying on top of the bed along with a couple pillows, and the comforter is pulled back slightly. All right. Was the comforter pulled back as you see it yes. when you arrived? Yes, it was. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 57. You recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Did you take that photograph? Yes. Is it an accurate representation of the scene as you saw it that day? Yes, it is. Could you describe to the jury what's contained in that photograph? This is another angle of that same <coughs> bed. I moved a little bit. Um, to the left to get a different angle of the bed. You can still see the comforter. You can see some creases on the comforter as though it was just taken out of its packaging. And you can also see a small shelving unit with clothing inside. Let me show you what's been marked as PS number 58. You recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Um, did you take that photograph? 
Yes. Is it an accurate representation of the sin that you saw on that day? Yes, it is. And could you describe to the jury what's contained in that photograph? This is an angle um, inside of the victim's bedroom. You can still see the bed in the photograph. You can still see the creases on the comforter that's laying on top of the bed. And you can also see the open closet doors and some of the items within the closet. There's clothes hanging from the um, line, and then there's also some um, personal items and games on top of the shelf. Thank you. I'd like to show you what's been marked State's Exhibit number 55. Could you look at that? And uh, first of all, did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. And, and is that an accurate representation of the scene as you saw it that day? Yes. And what does that depict? This is a photograph taken from the doorway of the victim's bedroom. The camera's angled down towards the carpet of the bedroom. And on the carpet, um, it was largely covered in yellow and brown stains. Um, when I opened the door to the bedroom, there was an overwhelming smell of urine from inside of the room. In this photo, along with the stained carpet, you can see uh, the bed as well. Mr. Porter, if I could interrupt, you described that as Exhibit 55. I believe that has been 59. used. Thank you, sir. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 60. Hmm. Uh, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Did you take that photograph? Yes. And does it accurately depict the scene as you saw it that day? Yes, it does. Can you describe what that photograph depicts? This photograph is from within the room. I'm now standing in the room, and I'm angling the camera toward the bedroom door. I'm angling it down a little bit so you can see the carpet, where you can see both brown and yellow visible stains on the carpet. Let me show you what's been marked as PS number 61. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Does it accurately depict the, the scene as you saw it that day? Yes. What does that photograph show? This is a close-up photograph of the mattress. Um, after I initially documented the bed with that comforter still on top of it, um, I then flipped the mattress to view what the underside of the mattress looked like. And the, this is a photograph of that underside of the mattress. And it has uh, brown and yellow stains covering the majority of the mattress. And I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 62. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Does it accurately depict the scene as you saw it that day? Yes. Um, can you describe what that shows? This is the angle as I'm standing at the foot of the bed. This is also after I flipped the mattress to view what the underside looked like. Um, so from the foot of the bed looking up at the bed, this photograph shows that the mattress was largely covered in uh, brown and yellow stains as well as possible blood. Um, could you detect any odor from the mattress? Yes. I want to I want to make this clear while I'm showing these photographs to the defendant. Um, upon initial investigation or examination or observation, was was the mattress side clean on the top? Yes, under the comforter. When I took that comforter off, that side of the mattress was clean. And then when you flipped it is when you saw the stain. Correct. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move for admission of PS number 56. 57, 58, 59, 60, and 60, I'm sorry, 60, 61, and 62. Any objection? No objection. Yes, 56 through 62 are each admitted without objection.
after photographing these items from from more or less a distance, did you and, and in their context, did you begin to photograph individual items that you believed had evidentiary value? Yes, I did. All right. I'm going to begin to show you a series of pictures of individual items, if you can identify these. Now, were these photographs all taken at the scene, or did you remove items to be processed at the Gwinnett uh, Police Station? I did both. I took some close-up individualized photographs at the crime scene, and then I also collected some items of evidence, and I photographed them back at the crime scene unit at headquarters. Tell, tell the jury about, I, I want to talk about how we maintain security of evidence. When you recover an item, not in necessarily in this case, but in any case, pursuant to your training, when you recover an item of evidence and you transport it away from the scene, what are your protocols as far as maintaining the integrity of that piece of evidence? As soon as the item is collected and put into an evidence bag on scene, that bag is sealed on scene. Um, I then put it in our crime scene truck that um, I maintain the security of that truck. So if it's in the truck, the truck is locked. After the scene is finished, all of my evidence is inside, it's bagged, it's been sealed. I'm now transporting that back to headquarters. So I drive the truck back to headquarters and then I remove the item of evidence the items of evidence and I we have evidence lockers in our crime scene unit and so the evidence is stored there for further processing. All right. And do you all do you do all the processing of the scene items that you remove or is that up to other crime scene investigators? Typically, the lead CSI is the one who ends up handling all the documentation and processing of all the evidence. All right. And so when you, when you, after you lock the items in the evidence locker, when you, do you go back at a later time for whatever processing is necessary? Yes. Are you responsible for maintaining the integrity of that item if you're the one who's processing it? Yes, I am. Now, describe to the jury what maintaining the integrity means in terms of sealing and unsealing and documenting all that? The integrity of the evidence is of the utmost importance. So when the the seal is not to be broken unless it's the lead CSI and I'm about to do the processing that's necessary on the item. Our evidence lockers are locked. I am the one that holds the key to that locked locker. Our unit in and of itself is a secure unit. Um, you have to, we have to let people in. There's no one that can freely walk around. Um, when I remove the items of evidence from the locker to do my further documentation and processing, I am with that item of evidence at all times. If, it's, if the bag has been opened and the evidence has been removed, I am there with it. And then what happens after you've done your processing? After all the processing is completely finished on an item of evidence, it gets put uh, back into the bag, resealed, labeled, initialed, um, and then we have an evidence unit that's located in the same building that the crime scene unit is, which is headquarters, and so I take my evidence up the hall to the evidence room and I put it into a locked locker. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, it, as we go through these next items, there may be some that were at the scene and there may be some that you did at headquarters, and, and we sort of, if we could describe that. First of all, I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 63. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes. Did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. And what does that photograph do? This is a photograph that I took on scene in the kitchen near those open cabinet doors under the kitchen sink. Um, it shows a white Walmart bag, and inside of that Walmart bag there was a receipt, and this is a close-up photograph of the receipt. And let me show you what's been marked as PS64. Can you look at that? First of all, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Did you take that photograph? Yes. Is it an accurate depiction of Yes. And can you describe to them what's contained in that photograph? Yes, this is a close-up of the receipt, that same receipt from the Walmart bag in the previous photo. This is a close-up that I took on scene of that receipt, so you can view all of the words on it. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 65. Can you look at that, and do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that? Yes, I did. Does it accurately show 
what item of evidence it purports to show. Yes. And can you describe to the jury what that is? This is a photograph that I took. It's a close-up photograph of another receipt. Um, it was on the kitchen counter, um, like the bar top of the kitchen, and it's a receipt for Anna's <coughs> linens. I'd like to show you what's been marked as state's exhibit number 66. You recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? Yes. And is it an accurate representation of what you wanted to show in that photograph? Yes, it is. Can you describe what's contained in that photograph? This is a medium photograph of that kitchen countertop, the bar top. Um, on it, Visible in the picture is a zippered uh, sheet bag and it has a set of full sheets inside. Also, s underneath this sheet set, you can see a, a small white piece of paper, which is the Anna Lennon's receipt from the previous photograph. It was under that sheet set. Stated, what's been marked as PS number 67, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Does it accurately depict what you were, what you were Yes, it does. Uh, can you describe to the jury what's contained in the, in the bag? The, or in the photograph, I'm sorry. This is another photograph of the full fitted sheet, that zippered container with the sheets inside from the kitchen countertop. You can see the um, barcode and the SKU visible on the bag. And then finally, or not finally, I've got several more, but what's been marked as PS number 68, um, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Does it accurately depict uh, what you were showing in that, in, on that day? Yes. And what, what is that photograph of? Or what this is another angle of that sheet set that was sitting on the countertop. It shows the brand name and the thread count. It appears that you took a number of photos to show different information about that particular sheet set. Is that yes. what you were doing? Yes. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 69. You recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And uh, did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. And what does that photograph this is a photograph that I took back at our crime scene unit. This uh, is a picture of the Walmart receipt from under the kitchen sink in the cabinet. And it also appears to contain a, a, a post-it note. Yes. And did, did you create that post-it note? Yes. When I'm photographing the evidence that I collect, I like to have uh, some type of evidence marker beside it in my photographs um, that states what it is that I'm taking a picture of. So beside this picture of the receipt is a uh, note with my handwriting on it that has the case number as well as what this is, which is a Walmart receipt from under the kitchen sink in the cabinet. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 70. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes. And did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Again, what does that photograph this is a picture that I took at the crime scene unit of the Anna's linen receipt. This um, picture has both the receipt as well as my label in it that states that it's the Anna's linen's receipt from the kitchen counter from underneath that bed sheet package. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS 71. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And can you... Is that an accurate depiction of, of the item that you photographed? Yes, it is. Where did that photograph, where was it taken? This was back at the crime scene unit. And can you describe what that depicts? This photograph is a, uh, it's a picture of the roll of duct tape with my label beside it saying that it's the roll of duct tape from under the kitchen sink um, in the cabinet. And then finally, what's been marked as PS number 72, you recognize that photograph? Yes. And did you take that photograph? Yes. Is it an accurate depiction of what you were taking a picture of? Yes, it is. And can you describe to the jury what that photograph depicts? This is the same roll of duct tape from the previous photo. In the previous photo, it was laying flat on the countertop. In this photograph, I stood it up so it's on its roll. Um, this was the roll of duct tape from under the kitchen sink in the cabinet.
Your Honor, at this time, the state would move for admission of, of um, exhibits Mark 63, PS 63, PS 64, PS 65, PS 66, PS 67, PS 68, PS 69, PS 70, PS 71, and PS 72. Any objection? No objection. PS 63 through 72 are each admitted without objection. During the time that you were that you were at the apartment, did you also have the opportunity to look through plastic or trash bags that contain clothing? Yes, I looked through bags within the apartment that had uh, clothing inside, and then also the two black trash bags from the outside by that metal trash can. I looked through those, not on scene, but back at the crime scene unit. And I want to I want to focus on the bags from inside the apartment. Okay. Which, and then we'll go to the trash bags outside. Okay. Um, could you take a look at what's been marked as PS number seventy three? You recognize that photo? Yes, I do. And did you take that photo? Yes. Um, does it accurately represent what it purports to show? Yes. And can you describe what that is a photograph of? This is a um, photograph that I took um, back at the crime scene unit. Um, the trash bags that I had collected, I wasn't able to see what was inside of them, so I didn't know if any of the contents inside the trash bags were wet. We have drying cabinets in our crime scene unit that we keep things in that need to be dried out before we can document them. So what I did was I went through the um, trash bags that I had collected to see, okay, is anything in here wet that needs dried? This photograph is something that was inside one of the trash bags. It's a plastic grocery bag, and there's... Uh, clothing and towel items inside, as well as uh, what look like blue latex gloves. And you can see the wet, um, like the dampness of on these items in this photograph. Right. And, and Ms. Finney, they, or Investigator Finney, these items were found in the two black trash bags out by the garbage can, is that right? Yes, that's correct. I'd like you to look at what's been marked as PS number 74. Did you, take, you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Did you take it? Yes. And does it accurately depict what it purports to show? Yes, it does. And what does it show? This photograph was also taken during the time when I was determining if anything was wet. Um, and that needed dried. This is a photograph of a plastic Kroger bag with clothing items inside as well as some type of black plastic. And you can see wet marks on the items and the bag showing that the items were wet. Um, why do you have to find out whether something's wet? Um, the, if you put an item of evidence that's wet inside of an evidence unit, it will mold. When you think of just if you have a wet towel and you leave it kind of all crumpled up, it's going to get mold and mildew. And so we don't want to ruin or contaminate any possible evidence that might be on a wet item. So we have large drying cabinets that we can use to hang wet items um, in until they're fully dry. And then after they're fully dry, that's when we do our documentation and packaging and submission. Does the, does the drying process, if done correctly, affect later test results? No, it does not. So, for instance, you could still get DNA off a clothing item that had been, that had been dry. Yes, yes. Let me show you what's been marked PS number 75. Um, you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? Yes. Is it an accurate representation of one of the items in the trash bags? Yes. Um, and can you describe what that this is a, a small blue washcloth. Um, I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 76. You recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Um, did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. And does it accurately show what you were photographing? Yes. Um, what does it show? 
This is a close-up photograph that I took of another item from within the bag. It's the um, kind of the standard white, blue, and pink blanket that you would receive, like a baby blanket from a hospital when a baby is born. And this photograph is a picture of one of those blankets. And the blanket is covered in various types of stains. There's uh, brown stains, yellow stains, as well as what appears to be um, mold or mildew stains. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 77. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Does it accurately represent the items that you found in the, in the Kroger trash bag? Yes. Um, what does that photograph show? This photograph are the contents of one of those Kroger grocery bags from inside the trash bag. It's several blue... Um, latex kind of hospital gloves, as well as some tissue, used tissue. I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 78. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Does it accurately depict one of the items out of the trash bags that has gone through the drying process? Yes, it does. And what does it show? This is a photograph of a, um, a small child girl's tank top. It's green. And then finally, I'd like to show you what's been marked as PS number 79. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And did you take that photograph? I did. Does it accurately depict an item after it's gone through the drying process that was found in the trash? Yes. And what does that this is a pair of um, girl children's underwear. Uh, the photograph shows that there are stains um, covering the majority of the underwear. All right, at this time, the state would move for admission of items that have been identified and marked as PS number 73, PS number 74, PS number 75, PS number 76, number 77, 78, and 79. Any objection? PS 73 through 79 are each admitted without objection. Yeah, I have one minute to 12. I'm at the court's pleasure. Is there a logical stopping spot that we're this, close to? This is as logical as I've got five more bundles of photographs. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a good time for us to take our lunch break then. We'll be sending you out for lunch in exactly the same way as we did yesterday. Please remember the instructions that I've given you previously. Do not discuss the case with anyone. Do not allow anyone else to discuss the case with you or in your presence or hearing. Do not even discuss the case amongst yourselves. Do not attempt any independent research or investigation into any aspect of the case. Do not read or listen to or look at any accounts of the case that might appear in the news media. And please remember, keep your juror badge prominently displayed on your person at all times for the reasons that I previously described. We'll be in recess until 1.30. You can go out with our bailiff. out. You're welcome to be seated. Thank you all very much. We'll go ahead and take a recess until 1.30. Thank you.